Armando Hasurugan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook, Armando Hasurugan. And here you can also like, and please ask some questions, no, ask questions, answer some questions, and post some interesting things, such as artworks. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, moles. But before that, I suggest to change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. So, in this video, we're going to talk about the mole concept. Now, a mole is defined as a quantity of a given substance that contains as many molecules or formula units as the number of atoms in exactly uh, 12 grams of carbon-12. Now, that in, in itself is a very complex definition, but essentially one mole equals Avogadro's number, and Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So, for example, one mole of carbon-12 will equal 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of carbon, which will give us um, a weight of 12 grams of the carbon-12. And so we can change this to that one mole of any element is 6.022 times 10 to 23 atoms of that element. And this will also equate to um, being one mole of any element will have uh, uh, in grams the atomic mass unit of that element. And a better definition to show this is by drawing a picture. So here uh, we'll have carbon which is a, who has atomic number 6 and atomic mass unit of 12.01. And here we have a jar containing a mole of carbon. And therefore, a mole of carbon atoms has a mass of 12 grams. Similarly, if we have oxygen, atomic number 8 and atomic mass unit 16, if we have a mole of oxygen in here, it means that the oxygen atoms has a mass of 16 grams. And then, again, if we have potassium, atomic number 19, if we have a mole of potassium in this jar, um, one mole of potassium atoms will have a mass of 39, which is the atomic mass unit. This is also known as the molar mass, and we'll get into that later on. Now, for example, if we have this jar of water, let's look at its, um, its chemical structures. Water is essentially H2O, consisting of two hydrogens and one oxygen. The atomic mass unit of two hydrogens is 2. And the atomic mass unit of uh, oxygen is 16. Now, the volume of each is uh, for hydrogen 2 is 2. And for oxygen, it's 1. Because we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Now, for example, if we had 2 moles of hydrogen, so this means we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 times 2 of this and then we had we you and we added this with one mole of oxygen so one mole of 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of oxygen we can make one mole of water h2o so one mole of water 6.022 times 10 to the 23 water molecules i hope you understood this uh concept now for example if there was a question how many molecules are present in 2.5 moles of carbon dioxide? Well, this question is straightforward. All you have to do is times 2.5 by Avogadro's number. And this will give us 1.5 times 10 to the 24. Uh, next, let's talk about molar mass. Now, I found this definition. Molar mass is the mass of one molecule of that substance. That's a pretty weird definition. Uh, a better definition we, we, would, we would use is molar mass is the quantity in grams that equals the atomic mass of the element, the atomic mass unit. That's what we're talking about. So, for example, if we look at the periodic table, we just pick an element, such as chloride, which is atomic number 17, and atomic mass unit of 35.45. If we had one mole of chloride, so we had one mole of chloride atoms, this would give us a molar mass of 35.45, which is essentially the atomic mass unit. Similarly, if, if we pick helium, atomic number 2, atomic mass unit 4, if we had one mole of helium atoms, this, this would have a molar mass of 4 grams. It's a pretty easy um, concept. So, for example, a question. Find the molar mass of salt, NaCl. So in this case, we would look up the atomic mass units of both, of both Na 
sodium and chloride. And then we will just, because we're just talking about one, um, one molecule of NaCl, we will just add 20, 22.9 plus 35.45, which will give us 58.5 grams per mole. So the molar mass of salt is 58.5 grams per mole. And uh, now we can take this example further. For example, if we had a table salt container which contained 75 grams of salt, NaCl, salt, how many moles of salt are present in the container? So if we had a salt, 75 grams, how many moles are present um, in this 75 grams of salt? So in this case, because we know that uh, the molar mass of one molecule of NaCl is 58.5 grams per mole, we can find out how many moles are in this container by dividing 75 grams of salt in the container by 58.5 grams per mole. And if we divide it, it will give us 1.28 moles of salt in the container. And there is, an actu there is actually a proper equation for this to find the molar mass of a given substance. So the molar mass, which we, which we designate M, and uh, we calculate it as grams per mole. So a molar mass of a substance is given by uh, capital M, which is molar mass, is equal to mass over amount. And so where M is the mass in grams and N is the amount in moles. And we can then rearrange this equation to find out the amount as in moles, or we can find out the mass. So for example, if there was a question such as, the golden jubilee diamond is the largest fa fac uh, faceted diamond, and it has a mass of 109.13 grams, what amount of carbon does this diamond contain, given that the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams? So now first thing to know is that diamond is made up of carbons. And the question is asking you, what amount? So we're trying to find N. So we, we can use this equation. And we know what M is. The mass is 109.13 grams. And the capital M, the molar mass, is of carbon, 12.01 grams. They give it to us. And so if we put all these values inside this equation, we come up with the uh, 9.087 moles. So the amount of carbon in the diamond, in that 109.13 gram diamond, is 9.087 moles. So quite simple. And you can use these, this equation to find what you want. Next, let's talk about the mass percentage from a formula. So this is to find the mass percentage of a given element, x, uh, from a particular substance, for example. So the mass percentage of x, being the element, is equal to the mass of x as a whole, divided by the mass of the whole, mass of the substance, times this by 100 to give us a percentage. So, for example, if we had a particular substance, phosphorus acid, and the chemical formula is H3PO3, and the question asks, calculate the mass percentage of the elements in phosphorus acid. So we have to calculate the mass percentage of three elements, hydrogen, phosphorus, and oxygen. To begin this, we have to look at the periodic table and no the molar masses of each of these elements. So hydrogen has 1, phosphorus is 31, and oxygen is 16. And what we first need to do is we need to find the mass of the whole. So mass of the whole, which is phosphorus acid. And because there's three hydrogens, we go 3 times 1, because 1 uh, represents uh, 1 molar mass. But because we have three hydrogens, we go 3 times 1 to give us 3 grams. And we only have one phosphorus in this uh, formula, so we go 1 times 31, which will give us 31 grams. And we have 3 oxygens, so 3 moles of oxygen times 16 to give us 48 grams. And therefore, if we add all these up, the mass of the whole will be 82 grams. And now, we can calculate the mass percentage of each element. So to begin with hydrogen, mass percentage of hydrogen is equal to 3 grams divided by 82 times 100. And this will give us 3.65%. So the mass percentage of hydrogen in phosphorus acid is 3.65%. Next, let's find the percentage of phosphorus, which is equals to the mass of phosphorus, 31, divided by the mass of the whole, 82 times 100. 
which will give us 37.8%. So the mass percentage of phosphorus in phosphorus acid is 37.8%. Next, let, let's look at the mass percentage of oxygen. So it is mass percentage of oxygen, which is 48 grams, divided by mass of the whole, which is 82 grams, times this by 100, which will give us 58.5%. So the mass percentage of oxygen in phosphorus acid is 58.5%. Um, I hope that made sense. I hope you enjoyed this video about the molar concept. Please comment and like. Thank you. And next we'll look into stock geometry, I think.